Hi everyone and welcome back to Kochi TV. This video is going to be on the pros and cons of doing aerobic threshold versus lactic threshold workouts, specifically for high school cross country runners, either male or female. Um, if you missed our video series on the science behind aerobic threshold and lactic threshold workouts, as well as training design, I would recommend you watching those videos um, before this one. Um, they're in the description down below. I am Kyle Giacono. I am the head boys cross country and track coach at Wharton High School in Tampa, Florida, and I have been for the last six years. If you want to see my credentials, they are on the screen. So we did a video that really detailed VO2 max testing and how you can use it to create workout paces for your athletes. That's also in the description down below if you haven't seen that one. But just to briefly recap, I recommend the Ashton protocol for testing your athletes VO2 max, which means you first start by doing a really good warm up with them, make sure they're ready to go. And then two miles, best pace needs to be two exhaustion. That's the only way this is going to be accurate. And if you do that, um, hypothetically, let's say you have either a pretty good high school boy or a fantastic high school girl runs 1030. That means they have a current VVO2 max or the pace at which their body reaches maximum oxygen consumption is 515. And that's just their date pace. It's not where they're going to be forever. It's where they are that day you did the test. So you take 5 times 60 plus 15 to get 315 seconds. And to create aerobic threshold workouts, um, those should be at 65 to 70 percent of VVO2 max. If, again, if you want the science of why that is, I would look at the video series on aerobic threshold or easy pace training. You divide 315 by 0 0.65 and then 315 by 0.7 to get the 65 to 70 percent. And that says that this kid should be doing aerobic threshold workouts at 730 to 805. Those are pretty easy, and a lot of times people think those are too easy to do most of the workouts, but we're going to take a look at um, how maybe the opposite is true, why you really want to look at um, lactic threshold as more of the complement and these as the bulk. So let's look at lactic threshold um, workouts. Um, right at lactic threshold, or what people call hard tempo runs or fast tempo runs, is 85% of date pace VVO2 max, which is 315 divided by 0.85, gives you 610 on the pace. You can also do moderate tempos, slightly slower, 78 to 82. If you do the same math, you're going to get 654 to 624 for this kid. Um, and let's take a look at um, what that all kind of means if we look at an energy continuum. So don't freak out when you see this. This is basically just anybody's paces from aerobic training all the way to the right, the slowest aerobic paces all the way out to if you were doing sprints of like fly 30 meters with the kid all the way out. Current VVO2 max is right in the middle. This is their two mile pace and easy pace workouts are going to be right here, 70 to 65% aerobic threshold. Your moderate tempos are going to be right around here, maybe a little bit more like at 80%, 78% to 82% are moderate tempos. And then your fast tempos or hard tempos are going to be at 85% date pace VVO2 max. This is where we're talking about here today. High school cross country 5Ks versus college men are going to be running the 10K. And that's really where I want to look at the, the differences between these two. So the law of specificity in terms of training science says that the specific nature of training produces its own specific adaptations. The training must be specific to the individual athlete and the demand of the chosen event or range of events. So essentially this means anytime you give any kind of training to your, your athlete, there's going to be a specific adaptation. And it may or may not be good. Um, the only thing that's certain is that that specific workout is going to create a specific adaptation. You need to know the specifics of your athlete, and that's where you come in. You can only know your athlete. Um, but you also need to know the specific de demands needed for their chosen event or range of events when you create these workouts. You don't just throw workouts in there and then figure out what the event is later. You really need to know what the specifics of the demands of that event are before you create these workouts. So let's look at this. Cross country 5K, which is what most high school kids run, is run at 97% of VVO2 max. Right over here. That is very close to two mile pace or your VO2 max test that you did. Versus college men, by the end of the season, run the 10K, which is at 92% of date pace VVO2 max. That is much closer or more similar to a tempo type workout. So essentially, um, a lot of times people will go to different clinics and they'll hear from college coaches that maybe are, are really talking more about doing longer tempo runs and faster tempo runs and maybe more often. 
And a lot of times high school coaches will take that information back and they'll just try and plug and play it into their, their scheme without any, even thinking about the fact that the race distance is different in college. And obviously those kids are much more trained, more highly trained, have been training for longer, so they can handle more of these tempo runs anyway. Whereas a high school kid, it's completely different in terms of what they're actually going for. So a college male really should be doing more tempo runs. It's much closer to their race demand. Um, it's much more similar to what they're going to need for their actual race. Also, another factor is we're going to look at the specific adaptations from these two different things, but a tempo run, a lactic threshold run, improves running economy better than an easy pace aerobic threshold run. And the longer the races get, from the 10K, 15K, marathon, half marathon, those races, running economy becomes much more important in who wins and loses the race. I'm going to do a whole video on um, anything from the half mile out to about the 10K of what the specific winning indicators are, what is the biggest reason why people win or lose. But for right now, just know the 10K, the biggest indicator is running economy. And lactic threshold workouts are not only closer to the demands of that race, so specificity, the law of specificity said it's better for a college athlete versus a high school athlete, but also that running economy, which is much more important, is better trained at tempo pace than at aerobic threshold pace. The shorter and faster 5K means that um, the tempo is much less specific for a high school kid. So with all these things in mind, where the race demands are in this law of specificity, what are the specific adaptations from aerobic threshold and lactic threshold workouts? Let's take a look here. So threefold from aerobic threshold running, cardiovascular system is going to be improved. Their heart is going to get bigger, specifically the left ventricle, that big pump is going to get bigger in their heart. Decreased resting heart rate, increased stroke volume and increased cardiac output. That's just moving more blood, increased blood flow increased blood volume and improved blood composition. Improved composition basically meaning there's more ability to hold oxygen on it. So that happens from aerobic threshold runs. The muscular system will be improved by the slow twitch muscle fibers being enhanced. Increased capillaries. So you can get more, not only are you getting more blood moving from the heart out from the cardiovascular system, but there's actually going to be more ways for capillaries to move through the muscles, so there's going to be even more way for the blood to get to those working muscles with more capillaries. You're going to get more mitochondria, the size is bigger, the number and the surface area, and all the aerobic respiration, all the aerobic energy in your body happens um, with the mitochondria, actually in and around the two sur uh, the surface area, there's two linings in mitochondria. So bigger surface area is really important um, for producing energy aerobically. And there is going to be enhanced running economy with aerobic threshold running. Metabolic systems, um, you're going to have increased fat storage and use and increased glycogen or stored glucose. Um, carbohydrate storage and use. Both of these things are going to be not only stored more in, um, in your body when you do this type of running, but your body is going to put them closer to the working muscles, the, the heart, um, the working muscles in your legs. So that's really important with aerobic threshold running is more of this fuel and putting it in an area where your body can better use it during activity. Also, there's going to be increased aerobic enzyme volume and activity, so you can produce more energy aerobically with the mitochondria. The key to all this is 20 minutes of continuous work. Um, after your kids are in shape, so a couple weeks into your training year, anything that's less than 20 minutes really doesn't do them any good because it's after 20 minutes that your body, you actually it's your heart, releases a protein-like hormone that is pretty much primarily responsible for all of these adaptations happening. So that's the key to all these 20 minutes of continuous work. Let's look at the design adaptations of lactic threshold or tempo workouts. And for the most part, these are very similar to what we just saw. Um, the only things that are very different here, two things that are added are in yellow, and the two things that are bolded and underlined are enhanced. Cardiovascular system, exactly the same thing. Um, muscular system, there is going to be an increase of the oxidative fast twitch muscle fibers increasing their aerobic abilities. So generally speaking, you have three muscle fiber types. There's a kind that's right in the middle that can act more aerobically if you train them a certain way or more anaerobically if you train them a certain way. Training at tempo workouts gets these, it's the intensity that gets these muscles to act more aerobically, which is really good for cross country, especially for distance runners doing it because we need all the energy aerobically that we can get. You're going to get more of the mitochondria in those muscles. They're just going to act more like slow twitch fibers, but they still, they act faster than normal slow twitch fibers. So this is great for a cross country runner. Um, as I mentioned, running economy is better enhanced with this type of workouts, which is why it's very important for the 10K for a college man. It's done at both of these workout intensities, but it's better done at lactic threshold. 
metabolic systems, you are going to have an increased ability to remove lactic acid. That's the part of the energy system, the, the, the byproducts that cause jelly leg fillings when you go too fast. That is not done at aerobic threshold because you're not producing any lactic acid. At lactic threshold, that means that your body is producing and clearing lactic acid in unison because there is going to be a significant contribution from your longer speed system, your longer anaerobic system. So this is something that can happen at um, a, a lactic threshold that really does not happen at aerobic threshold. Also, your body is going to uh, store more glycogen um, and use it better, uh, putting it near the working muscles at tempo pace, simply because your body burns it more, so it's going to do a, a faster job of this recycling and storing. It's going to do, do it better as it goes through these processes, as long as you give it the proper recovery to where it can actually do this. Now, um, increased ability to remove lactic acid really isn't all that critical in the 5K. Yes, there's acid level that builds up, but the limiting factor is typically going to be who can produce the most energy aerobically. The race is too long for you to really clear the lactic acid. What we want to do is make it a, uh, make a system in a uh, 5K runner to where they don't have to use very much of their speed system. So even though this is done at tempo pace, for a 5K runner, it's too long and too high intensity for this metabolic system adaptation to really matter because you're not going to speed your way through it to where it, it's going to build too much anyway. It's too high intensity to clear enough of it, whereas the lower intensity 10K for a college man, this is becoming much more important for those runners. So um, you still need... Um, to have 20 minutes of continuous work. And one of the downfalls of these workouts is typically the volume is going to be a little bit lower just because the intensity is higher. Now, you can add a cool down on the back end. If you missed our lactic threshold uh, workout series video, I would take a look at that and I, can, uh, I go through where you can really add those volume, um, those key miles back in for the 20 plus minutes. So let's take a look at right now these pros and cons of the two, and then you can decide what makes sense for you and your athlete. So starting with aerobic threshold running. The pros are this low intensity allows safe volume increases. You need volume for a distance runner, and this is the safest way to do it because it's low intensity. You're going to get all those benefits we talked about a few slides ago from this type of workout, and especially early on, this is the easiest and safest way to increase the volume of your runner. And this provides, as we saw, almost all the desired aerobic adaptations that we, we mentioned. And really, a lot of the ones that, that uh, there's only one that's really um, isn't done at this level, the oxidative fast twitch muscle fibers acting aerobically, that's really the only one that matters because you're not going to drain the lactic acid um, at, this, at, at a 5K in high school, and that's what we're really looking at here. Um, so pretty much all the adaptations that you're looking for, you're going to get with this type of workout primarily. This type of run supports central VO2 max development. I'll do a video on central versus peripheral VO2 max, what those two things mean and how you can train them. But essentially, central VO2 max is moving oxygen from your heart, your lungs and your heart, out from the center of your body, out to the working muscles. And basically, that is bigger heart, more capillaries, more blood flow, all those things we talked about um, in a previous slide about these adaptations we're looking for is supported with aerobic threshold running. And these only require 24 hours of recovery. You can do anything the next day. There's nothing limiting you the next day. So all those pros are there, and nothing's holding you back from the next day doing something higher intensity. The cons, um, not very many here, um, but they, these can be done too much. Um, this is very, very, very rarely could happen. Um, you know, early on, you're going to tell your kids, especially if you're going to more of a longer um, training scheme here, when you first start saying we're running longer, they're going to be like, oh man, more miles. But after a while, and I know I get this with my kids, when I say it's a 10, 11, 12 mile long run, they love those days. Low intensity means that they can talk the whole time. They can, you know, communicate with those in their, their training group. Um, they're not going to be dying with every single step. And so sometimes if you have a kid that has to train on their own, or maybe it's just, maybe you're watching this video to try and train yourself, it's very easy to just lock into, I want to do a long run today, an aerobic threshold recovery run today. So they can be overdone, and then you won't get some of the, the variety of intensities that you need. So that's really the only con here. Lactic threshold or tempo runs. The pros here, the medium intensity does provide, provide variety, especially earlier on in your training year. Again, you don't want to become overly dependent on just doing um, aerobic threshold easy paces. So this provides some variety. As we mentioned, the oxidative fast twitch muscles increase their aerobic abilities, and this is fantastic for a distance runner. This is what we want in cross country. Just like with aerobic threshold, it supports central VO2 max development. Now, here's some things that um, 
we mentioned as being very specific to a, a lactic threshold running increased ability to remove lactate but as we mentioned this really isn't a big deal for the, the high school 5k it's just too high intense too much of a high intensity and too long for this really to make a big issue you're still going to have issues in the last mile um, even if you've really improved this ability Enhanced running economy, well, that is important, but not overly important at the 5K. It's much more important at the college 10K. It is important to have glycogen storage, and it's better done at this intensity, but that's also done with aerobic threshold running. Um, so a lot of these pros um, we saw over in the aerobic threshold side. A lot more cons here that you have to be aware of. Increased intensity requires more recovery. You can't come back the next day and do a high-intensity intervals and you definitely wouldn't stack two of these types of lactic threshold workouts together you got to give them an easy day the day after a lactic threshold run it's just the way it is now this is medium intensity so you can get away especially earlier in the year doing something like maybe a long aerobic power vo2 max or long intervals um your two mile pace for 800,000 mile or whatever it is that you're doing and you could get away with stacking maybe an easier lactic threshold workout like a moderate tempo or a fart lick or something like that the day after, but the, the day after this, you've got to give them um, a recovery. It's, it's 48 hours recovery before you can do something hard like this again. Now, oxidative fast twitch muscle fiber increasing their aerobic abilities is not good for short middle distance runners. I should have just said middies, but short middle distance runners. And I'm talking about the 400, 800 kid that you're trying to get run cross country for the first time. Um, I would watch my lactic threshold video. I go through why this is an issue, but um, this is something you don't want to do necessarily with this type of runner. Race specificity for the 5K is reduced. It's just not as important at this distance to, to do as many lactic threshold runs like it would be for a college male in the 10K. Increased muscle and tendon damage. You're, you're running at a higher intensity for a lot of volume. There's that inverse re relationship. Usually when volume is high, intensity is low. And when intensity is really high, the volume is low. But this workout is right in the middle. It's, it's medium intensity, and it's usually pretty much medium pace. So you are going to have increased muscle damage and tendon damage which is one of the reasons why you need more of recovery time, as well as it using more of this important fuel source, the stored carbohydrates or glycogen. You've only got two hours worth of it, and you need to know where in your weeks you're going to use that. Doing too many of these takes away more maybe race-specific aerobic power type workouts um, or other workouts that are really important for the development of a high school 5K kid um, that are more important for who wins those races versus maybe a college runner. So... The key takeaway here is the bulk of a, of a high school cross-country 5K runner really should be from this aerobic threshold work, and these lactic threshold works really should be the accent, what adds to your continuous aerobic work. Make sure that you are keeping things specific. Tempo runs are still important. Just make sure that you're, you're understanding where the importance lies and where you're starting to put the, the ranking of what you're doing on a week-in, week-out basis. Um, and the law of specificity in mind when you're train, coming up with this training design, make sure that you not only know your kids, their training age, what they can handle in terms of um, the type of workout, the intensities of the workouts you're giving them, and the distances that you're asking them to go at those intensities. And also, I hope I helped um, you understand a little bit better the race demands of the high school 5K, which is what this video is for, versus the college 10K, which has a completely different uh, specific demands that you need to look for. So if you, uh, if you like this video, uh, please consider maybe uh, subscribing to the channel or um, give me a like down below. If you have a question, something that maybe I didn't explain fully, I'd love to answer them. Leave them in the comments down below. Um, in the coming days, I am going to do a workout series on aerobic power or VO2 max long interval workouts, science behind them, and how you can create them safely for your athletes. Um, that'll come out in the next few days. Until next time, this has been Coach ETV. E